Welcome to the third Commodore Basic tutorial. Currently, I'm actually trying to find a, an emulator for a Texas Instrument calculator so I could do tutorials in TI Basic. So if you own a Texas Instrument calculator, you could program games and stuff on it. But this is Commodore Basic. Com that's just an example of how Basic is still used today. Basic is used on Texas Instrument calculators, except all versions of BASIC are different, so if you just try to put Commodore BASIC on there, it won't work. But in this Commodore BASIC tutorial, we're going to talk about conditionals. Conditionals on Commodore BASIC are much simpler than any other language. This is because in other languages that we use today, like maybe C++ or Visual BASIC or whatever, your conditionals say like if then and if something like that or if then else or all this stuff but that's not on this this doesn't have an end if this doesn't have an else this is just very straightforward so if you don't know what i'm talking about don't worry because i'll show you it's really easy on a commodore basic um so first you want to let me show you an example let's say x equals 5 and then for line 10 I'm going to say if x equals 3 then print then print true then line 20 I'm going to say if x does not equal to make a does not equal you put a greater than you put a less than and a greater than sign kind of facing each other like that if x is not equal to 3 then print false and now when you run it it's syntax error in line 20 oh I see what I did that was stupid let me write that again if x Three, then print. I forgot the T on print. False. And run. As you can see, let me clear the screen. As you can see, when I write run, I get false. The reason is because I'm setting X to 5, and my conditional is checking if X equals 3, then print true. But if it's not equal to 3, print false. But since it's not equal to 3, it's not going to do what's said after the then. It's going to, so it's not going to print, it's not going to print true because that's not true. But then when it goes to if x is not equal to 3, that's true, so it's going to actually continue with what's after the then and write false. So basically this is how it works. You have if, let me see if I can go up here, you have if. And then you have a condition. The condi if then you have then. If the condition is true, returns true, it executes whatever code is written after the um, then. So if x equals three, x does not equal three, so this is false. So this is, since this isn't true, it's not going to execute what's what's after print. This one says if x is not equal to three x doesn't equal 3 is true because x doesn't equal 3 so then it's going to print false um, now let's go down here and let's change x equal change down line 0 we're going to make x actually equal to 3 and now when we run this it's going to say true because now x is equal to 3 so we're going to say true um, as you can see you can't it would be, you can't really fit much code after the then statement. So this is what some people do. Print ghr. And this is where you're going to be introduced to a whole, a whole new thing. Um, go to line 0 and make line 0 clear the screen. Let's list. Um, let's go to line 10 and say... Let's make a little password thing. 
um, let's say if let's let's say um, print password and we're going to say line 20 pass dollar sign equals or no we're going to write input pass dollar sign let you input the password then we're going to say if pass equals if pass equals and then since it's a string we're going to write if pass equals John one two three then this is a new concept go to see how there there's a, like a data position that's kind of like lines how we did 0 10 20 30 there's a another there's something called go to code reads from 0 down so it reads from top to bottom but if you say go to you can make code jump somewhere else and you're going to see this if i say go to 50 no let's go to 60 then line 40 if pass is not equal to john 123 then go to 50 then on line 50 i'm going to say print let's go back to line hold up let's go back to line 30 again and say if pass dollar sign equals john 123 then go to 90 let's increase this let go to 100 let's increase this to give me more room so if you're confused at what's going on let me write in let me run this and this is what we have so far and define statement line 40 it says line 40 doesn't exist yet now if we type in list this is what we have so far clear the screen print for a password um, ask for a password and then input till I type in the password. If password equals John123, then go to data position 100 or line 100. If pass dollar sign does not equal one John123, then go to position 50. And in position 50, we're going to print great, or er, let's print who are you? And then let's just say line 60 go to um, 200 and 200 just be the end of our code. Um, then for a lot, let's go to position 100 and print welcome John. And then 200 just going to be At line 200, let's um, just say, okay, okay, let's go ahead and end this and run it. And John123, welcome John. Um, then let's run it again. Who are you? What, what did we do in line 60 that's wrong? Oh, go to 200. We don't have 200 to find. Let's put something in 200. Doesn't matter what we put. Let's just put one. Oh, it won't let us put one. Let's put Z equals one. Doesn't matter what we put in one. And run. Now look. If I, this is kind of a complicated concept. So I'm trying to explain it as best as possible. Password, it lets me type in a password, and as you can see, if I type in just anything, it's going to say, um, who are you? Who are you? Let's see, what's the password? Blobby. Who are you? But if I type in the right password, let's say, John123, it's going to say, welcome, John. Best way I can explain this, let me go over it one more time. First, you clear the screen, and then we then we just made a prompt for a password and waited till I put in the password. 
And then here's where we used our condition, our conditional. If the password equal to John123, then go to data position 100 or line 100. If, you can put a space there. If path is not equal to John123, then go to 50. Then, um, and then see, it's go to jump to different positions. So this, so basically if it's not equal to path, then it's going to jump down to 50, and 50 is right here. And then at 50, it's going to say, who are you? And then it's going to jump to 200, which 200 really just is the end of our code. I only put G equals 1 there to hold space. So 200 is really the end of our code. And then, but if it is equal to jump 1, 2, 3, then we go to position 100. And see, if you go to position 100, we skip over where it prints, who are you? And we print just welcome John and then it ends. So it's a little bit complicated to grasp, but this is basically how it works. How conditionals work and go to's work. Go to's are a little important basically because like these if statements, you don't have enough room to write stuff on one line. You use go to's and you can almost use go to's like functions sometimes. It's pretty complicated stuff, but if you understand the basic concept of how go to's move the code to different positions and how you can use conditionals with the in with variables and the stuff you've learned you already really know enough to make a text adventure game um just one more thing if statements let's say i type if x percent equals three then you can check the condition if a number equals three you can check if a number is less than Oh, just an FYI, see how my cursor is blinking and any time I place a cursor, a character it replaces? We press the insert key. Oh, never mind. I can't remember what key it is. But that's besides the point. Anyway, let's go back to where we were. What I was saying was, you can have um, an equals x, so your number equals something. Or you can say if your number is less than something. If your number is greater than something, if your number is greater than or equal to, let me do that again, greater than or equal to 3 then, or you can say less than or equal to, or you can say not equal to. And if it's a string, like I showed above, you're going to set if it's equal to something in quotes. Your string's never going to be less than or greater than another string. It's just, o it's only going to be equal to or not equal to. So, th I know this is a little complicated, and my tutorial is pretty slow, but if you kind of understood it, then that's the point.